Arrow Lake is Intel's revolutionary new processor for mainstream desktop, featuring new P-cores and E-cores, disaggregated tile-based 3D for Veros packaging, an integrated NPU for AI acceleration, a next-generation Encore, DLVR power rails, and so much more. In this video series, I have a look at Arrow Lake performance tuning and overclocking opportunities. I have a look at the compute, the memory subsystem, and the data fabric. In this video, I'm having a look at the Arrow Lake Integrated Graphics. The Arrow Lake Integrated Graphics are located on the graphics tile and are just disconnected from the other compute IP blocks. It doesn't share the tile with any other IP blocks, not even the media engine. The Integrated Graphics features four XELPG cores. This is an improved version of the XELP course from Raptor Lake, which effectively doubles the execution units. However, it is still based on the Alchemist architecture. The four XE cores consist of 64 execution units and 512 shader units. The clocking of the Arrow Lake integrated graphics is very similar to how it was on previous platforms. There's a reference clock, which gets multiplied with a GT ratio to get the eventual graphics frequency. The 100 MHz reference clock is generated internally by the SLC PLL. The 100 MHz reference clock is divided by 2 to achieve a 50 MHz base clock frequency for the graphics. It can also be clocked with an external clock generator providing the reference clock for the SLC PLL. This PLL can be linked to the CPU PLL when you run in synchronous mode or work independently if you run a synchronous mode. You can configure the SLC BCLK frequency between 40 and 1000 MHz. In the ASUS RG BIOS, you can configure the SLC BCLK frequency in the AI tweaker menu by first setting the AI overclock tuner to anything else than auto. And then you can switch between a synchronous and synchronous mode by adjusting the BCLK mode option. The reference clock is multiplied by the GT ratio or the graphics technology ratio to get to the ultimate graphics frequency. The GT ratio is determined by the graphics dynamic frequency technology. The graphics dynamic frequency capability is designed to allow the processor to assess its thermals, current and power to come up with a dynamic upper limit on its graphics frequency. When graphics dynamic frequency is enabled, the graphics cores could be running at any ratio in the inclusive range between the maximum dynamic frequency, or RP0, and the graphics base frequency, RP1. In the case of our Core Ultra 9 285K, the graphics base frequency is 300 MHz, and the default maximum dynamic frequency is 2000 MHz. When overclocking, we simply increase this maximum dynamic frequency, or RP0, to a higher value. The GT ratio starts from 1x. The default ratio is 40x, which yields a 2 GHz operating frequency, and the maximum configurable ratio is 85x. In the ASUS RG BIOS, you can configure the graphics maximum dynamic frequency via the AI Tweaker menu. The voltage regulation for the integrated graphics is similar to how it was on previous generation Raptor Lake. The integrated graphics relies on a VF curve defined by up to seven VF points. The first six VF points are factory fused and the last point is mapped to the OC ratio. Here is the GT VF curve for my specific Core Ultra 9 285K. The voltage is about 700 millivolt at 400 megahertz then increases to 984 millivolt for VF.6 at 2 gigahertz. 2 gigahertz is the default maximum frequency for the integrated graphics. To safeguard the processor, Intel has imposed strict voltage limits on the integrated graphics. The voltage limits means that the integrated graphics cannot request higher voltages to the CPU power control unit. By default, the voltage limit for the GT is 1.017 volt, but this can be increased to 1.11 volt under ambient conditions. When the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, you can further increase the voltage limit or disable the limit altogether. Of course, in 
power gate PM bus mode, you can override the voltage limit and set any voltage you want. But motherboard vendors may implement their own voltage limits for the voltage regulator. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the integrated graphics voltage limit via the AI Tweaker Max Voltage Limits submenu. The external VCC GT motherboard voltage regulator or MBVR provides the voltage rail for the integrated graphics. Unlike the other compute IP blocks, it does not have a DLVR to manage the voltage. So the power delivery is identical to previous architectures. We can refer to it as power gate mode or PG mode. Based on the GTVF curve, the integrated graphics requests an operating voltage using the SVIT protocol from the CPU power control unit or PCU. The PCU in turn configures the VCC GT voltage rail. There are two ways to configure the graphics voltage, adaptive mode and override mode. Adaptive mode is the standard mode of operation, which relies on the factory fused voltage frequency curves we discussed before. Override mode specifies a single static voltage across all ratios. We can configure override and adaptive modes directly in the PCU by specifying a target voltage and a voltage offset for each mode. In adaptive mode, the target voltage is mapped to the GT's OC ratio. This also matches VF.7. You can configure the adaptive voltage and the OC ratio to any value. However, multiple rules enforce what ratio and voltage is actually set. Rule number one, the voltage set for a given VF point N must be higher than or equal to the voltage for VF point N minus one. In the case of the GT, it means that the voltage for the OC ratio must be higher than or equal to the voltage for VF point six. This can be a little bit strange because you can program the OC ratio to any value, including lower than 40x. For example, let's say you set the GT ratio to 30x and the adaptive voltage to 0.8 volt. In that case, VF.7 will be programmed to 30x at 0.8 volt. However, the actual frequency will be 1.5 gigahertz with 0.984 volt, as that's the voltage for VF.6. Rule number two, for ratios between the OC ratio and the next highest factory fused VF point, the voltage is interpolated between the set adaptive voltage and the factory fused voltage. Let's say we configure the GTOC point to 60x and 1.25 volt. The target voltage for GT ratios between 40x and 60x is now interpolated between the factory fused voltage for 40x and the set adaptive voltage for 60x. One last thing about adaptive mode. The adaptive offset is applied across the entire curve. So if we set a plus 100 millivolt adaptive offset, the operating voltage for all frequencies between 1x and the OC ratio will be increased by 100 millivolt. Unfortunately, the graphics adaptive voltage SVIT configuration is not available in the ASUS ROG BIOS. However, you can access it using Shimino's work tool or configure it using the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. As I just mentioned, the GT adaptive voltage mode isn't available on the ASUS BIOS, at least not the one that I'm using on this system here. But that doesn't mean that we can't control the graphics voltage because there's a second approach to using power gate mode. And that's by ignoring all the ISFIT requests and calculations and programming the voltage regulator directly over PM bus. That essentially gives us direct control over the voltage output of the VCC GT voltage rail. This approach is a very traditional way of overclocking, whereby you set a fixed output voltage and then use an appropriate VRM load line setting, if available, to reduce the voltage in high load conditions. The load line configuration isn't particularly useful for integrated graphics, however. In the case of the integrated graphics, it seems that power gate mode is better for overclocking because the PCU relies on some of the SVID requests to do some power calculation and it can throttle the frequency in certain scenarios. The processor power consumption is primarily governed by the Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 technology. 
Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 technology allows the processor cores and graphics to run faster than the base specification if the operating conditions allow for it. The Turbo Boost algorithm works according to an EWMA formula. This stands for Exponentially Weighed Moving Average. There are three main parameters to consider, PL1, PL2, and Tau. Turbo Boost 2.0 technology has evolved over the past years to incorporate many power, thermal, and electrical performance limiters. To cover each of these in this video would take up too much time. Note that while the CPU cores and the graphics power management both fall under the purview of the Turbo Boost 2.0 technology, each component also has individual limits. For example, the graphics performance may be throttled due to a VCC GT voltage rail specific limiter like VRTDC, even though there's plenty of overall Turbo Boost budget available. Intel provides two performance profiles for the Arrow Lake SKUs, which configure all these settings for you. For the Core Ultra 9 285K, the Turbo Boost 2.0 profiles are performance and extreme. Should you wish to override the performance profiles, you can do so in two ways, either by manually configuring them in the BIOS or by enabling ASUS multi-core enhancement. ASUS multi-core enhancement allows for higher out-of-the-box performance by tuning some of the major Turbo Boost 2.0 technology parameters. Note that you can select an Intel performance profile and enable MCE at the same time. The effect will be that MCE overrides the most common Turbo Boost 2.0 parameters, such as PL1 and PL2, but will adhere to other limiters, such as the current excursion protection configured by the Intel performance preset. The ASUS Advanced OC profile is a more elaborate, unleashed overclocking profile than multi-core enhancement, as it doesn't just adjust the major Turbo Boost 2.0 parameters, but also implements a lot of BIOS auto rules to facilitate overclocking. Overclocking the integrated graphics is similar to how it was on Raptor Lake. At the default frequency of 2 GHz with DDR5 4800 memory, we get about 27 frames per second in Tomb Raider. When we enable MCE and pair the IGP with DDR5 8000 memory, that increases to 30 frames per second. However, the biggest performance increase comes from overclocking the graphics frequency. We can quite easily increase the frequency to 2.8 GHz, that increases the Tomb Raider performance to 37 frames per second. Then things get a little bit more tricky because we're starting to trigger some power limits. To make a long story short, the easy solution is to switch the voltage controller to PM bus mode. That simply cuts the communication line between the graphics and the VCC GT voltage controller. Then we can set the voltage controller to output any voltage while telling the integrated graphics to only request 600 millivolt. With this trick, we can further increase the graphics frequency to 3 GHz with 1.35 volt. And that results in a Tomb Raider performance of 38 frames per second.